Hey guys, today we're going to be seeing how to install CasaOS and have your self-hosted environment set up. So having CasaOS on top of an Ubuntu layer or a Debian layer will help you set up your self-hosted environment like image or any apps or Docker containers that you would like to run. So it's more like an easy way to set things up and have everything at one place with a home page and everything dedicated to itself so to do that first we're going to have to install a layer of ubuntu or debian and then install casa os on top of it and have it set and configured with the static ip so that every time you reboot your router you should still be able to use the uh, server with the same ip address so for first beginning what we are going to do is use a laptop and figure out what its IP address is and then have it set up as a static IP on your router. So what we are going to do is find what your IP is using your router settings. So I am going to open up and type in my routers default IP address. So what you can do to find this one out is go check your router and it should be there mine is a ZTE router so and I'm gonna enter the default router and and the admin user and password should be there on your router itself unless you decided to change it now what we do is enter in login and you can see all the devices that are connected to the router so the one we are looking for no let's just go to local network so you're looking for something called DHCP binding which will help you set a state like stable IP address now let's see where it is yeah there you go so this is all the devices that's connected to my router now I'm looking for a device. So that's my laptop and that's the MAC address. So what you need to do is have DHCP binded to an IP address. So it's currently on the IP address 13 at the end over there with the MAC address this one. So if I restart the router, ideally it should be the same to have a server, NAS server set up but every time it changes unless you bind it to the same IP so what we are gonna do is click and then create new item and then you name so let me just show you I'm just gonna remove this so you can see so I'm gonna name the laptop as mini and the Mac address from the thing over here E0464 TD. Now that's my MAC address and the IP address that I wanted to stay on every single time I boot into the laptop is 192.168.1.13 Once that's done, you go ahead and click apply. So anytime you reboot your router you should be able to get the same IP address I've done the same with another server of mine over here so you see and once you bind it it's gonna show you infinity over there so that it doesn't refresh itself automatically and change the IP address now once you're done log out the next thing you need is to install a Linux based operating system so that you can have Kazen OS installed on top of it So what I'm gonna do is okay I'm gonna install it on this drive I don't have anything on this laptop so I don't mind formatting it but if you do have some data in your old laptop I would suggest you back it up completely because it'll erase everything now the best option is for you to completely clean install Linux onto it because um, if you're running an old lap laptop as a server you might need as much as resources available as possible so I'm gonna make a bootable Ubuntu 
so that you can boot from a USB and then have it live installed. Now type in Ubuntu, download Ubuntu desktop, then I'm gonna download, so you have two versions, the long term service edition and the desktop one, I'm just gonna go with the desktop one. So you can either download it by just clicking on the download now but I would suggest you download it through a torrent because it's much faster than the one that I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to hit cancel and download it as a torrent. Let's see. Now you can see check alternative downloads. Click on that link. Go down. I'm going to use it as a torrent. So I'm going to download this one. And save. And then you can open it as a torrent file. So. Now this will download it much much faster than the direct download option there. Now we will need a software called Rufus. Now we go to rufus.ie and you use the software. So we've downloaded the softwares. Now we just wait until the download is completed over here. So once you have the file downloaded, I'm gonna just stop saving it there and then go to the place where you downloaded it, just downloads. So you're gonna open the Rufus software, click yes, and then you're gonna need a USB drive that's at least 8 gigs in space. So I've inserted a 32 one and the ISO is what you're gonna select over here. Click select. And then you select the Ubuntu ISO there. So once you have that, you're just gonna hit start so anything that's on the usb will be formatted so you click on write iso mode recommended okay and then you click okay there so once it starts wait until the process finishes i've already returned the usb for me so i didn't go through that over there so once you have it done you should have something like that over there so insert the USB and then you click on start you have to enter BIOS to disable secure boot so that you have the um, Ubuntu thing booting up from UEFI so you click on start hold your shift button on the laptop and then click restart now once you have that you're gonna click on troubleshoot and then advanced options and then UEFI settings and then click restart so this should take you to the BIOS every laptop has a different BIOS key this is a method that we follow so that it's, it's easy to like get into it so what I'm gonna do is enter advanced mode in this you should be looking for something called secure boot so it should be there on let's see we just go one by one and then see okay one is usb configuration and see if usb support is enabled and go into boot you can see fast boot enabled boot option one boot option two is the thing that was there before okay uefi sand disk is the one that i've installed now so another thing you you will have to boot from the sand disk one since that's the one that we need to boot from right now because that's the usb that you've made bootable so other than that if you go into security you should find secure boot and make sure it's set to disabled now disabled save and exit click on save and exit and so what i'm going to do is head back to the easy mode and just use the boot option boot menu and boot into SanDisk 
now you see there's an option to try ubuntu so hit try or install now once you boot it into ubuntu you wait for the setup to get ready now preferably you should be connected to your wi-fi throughout the process so that it makes your installation much smoother again you can also install a server version of ubuntu if your laptop cannot handle a complete version now select your language click next select your keyboard layout mine is a uk one i'm gonna select that now here you connect to your wi-fi or network you enter the password click enter the patient while it connects and then click next now you have two options to either try or install i'm going to go ahead with install interactive installation select the default installation enable these two options so one is having additional support for your hardware drivers and the other one is the major formats so i would suggest you have both enabled now you can either install Ubuntu alongside of Windows Boot or erase and install Ubuntu like completely. So I'm gonna select erase disk and install because I don't want Ubuntu running alongside of Windows. So it completely depends on what you want. Now I'm gonna set this as main because this is my main laptop so I thought I'll just set it to mini set a password for it now i'm going to set it to not require a password at login so that even if it like turns off i still have the laptop booting straight into it so that i don't have to restart any servers now select the time zone so that's the part in which you're going to be erasing and everything again make sure you've backed up everything guys hit install now you wait until the installation process is complete so once you have it installed you can click on restart now now Windows is going to prompt to remove the USB that you insert, inserted for the installation now as you can see it's asking you to do that now you remove the installation and then hit enter I'll wait until it boots into Ubuntu. Now there you go, it installed Ubuntu successfully. Now click next. Now next again, finish. So as you can see Ubuntu 24.10 has been installed. Now once you have Ubuntu installed, you're going to have to install curl to install the um, Casa OS using curl. So let's just open up a browser and type in Casa OS. I'm going to show you the process is very simple. Click on the first link that comes in and you head into Casa OS website over there. Now let's wait for it to load. Now it's pretty much a simple layer on top of Ubuntu so now all you need is a single code to install Casos if you have all the dependencies now open up terminal and paste now it's gonna tell you what you need to install. So do space apt space install space curl. So this should install the curl dependencies. Okay. My bad. I typed in sudo. Okay. So do and you type in the password of your 
operating system and hit enter. So it's going to fetch the libraries and install. Once that is done, you copy the code from the Casaros website, single line one, and then we right click and paste. Now this should start installing Casaros on Ubuntu. This will install the dependencies of Docker and everything that's needed for Casaros to run smoothly. So just wait for it to complete. And as we have already assigned the static IP, the DHCP uh, binding to the machine, so because of the Mac or Mac address on the laptop, it's gonna assign the same IP address that we gave earlier, which is 192.168.1.13, even when you restart your router or anything. So just wait and you should be able to see how to log into Casaros as well. Now, as you can see, Casaros is installed. And as I told you before, look at the IP that's there. Now you can open the IP and it should take you to Casaros web page. Now, you have to set up a username, click go and type in the user I'm just gonna type in mini and the password for it and create and so then so there you go that's your very own self-hosted CASOS environment. Now, as you can see, you can set up a lot of things over here. You can use this as a search engine. Now, let's remove the things that I don't want. Now, there you go. Now, this will show you the storage that's available. I have installed an SSD on this laptop, so that's what's available there. And you can even create your own NAS storage over here. I'm just going to show you a few things that you can do here. You can open the App Store up and as you can see, you can install any self-hosted environment like um, image. There you go. You can install image or you can install Jellyfin. You can pretty much self-host anything that you would do on a normal server. Just that this one has a better um, user interface. You can even install by hole to block advertisements. You can have Photoprism as your own uh, backup servers for photos. My favorite one is the image one over here. And I'm going to make a video later on on how to install image on CASOS. Now, there you go. Once you have everything, you can just access this web page on any laptop on your network or any PC on your network using this and login with your user ID for CASOS. So if you guys like the video, hit thumbs up and subscribe guys. This helps me a lot and helps me make more videos relating to the topic that you guys like so that I know which ones you like and please do leave comments below if you have any issues or if you want any new videos or any suggestions. Thanks for watching guys.